Hi, and welcome to another lesson of the TI-84 plus CE student course. We're still looking at graphing, and in this particular lesson, we're going to focus in on tracing those graphs and also how to best use the table setup as well. So in particular, we're looking at using the trace function to identify some of the approximate locations of points of interest on a graph. And we're also going to use the table to help to find some of those same points of interest and help to find breaks in functions as well. And lastly, we're going to talk about setting up the table to ask for dependent or independent variables. OK, so our first example looks pretty daunting. Um, we are looking at graphing uh, the equations y equals 5x squared minus 8x plus 6, and also y equals negative 8x squared plus 18x minus 7. We want to find, do they intersect at any point? And if so, what point is that? So the reason why they look quite daunting is they're both non-monic quadratics. So um, they do involve probably a, bit, a little bit of complex factorizing um, at first appearance. They actually don't. You can, there is a nice common factor that you can take out. And if you want to have a go at doing this question algebraically, I strongly recommend that you do. But on first appearance, they, they do look like it might have a really difficult solution. So what I want to talk about is maybe how we could set that up and quickly check on a graph and have a look at firstly, if is there any points of intersection? And also, is it maybe going to be a tough one to solve or not? So first thing I'm going to do is input my equations into my function editor. So in y equals, so I'm going to hit that y equals button. Um, and then my y1, I'm going to put in my first equation. So that was 5x using the x next to the alpha, 5x squared uh, plus minus 8x plus 6. Right, in my second equation, I'm going to put that second one in there. Remembering that the first, if you if your first term is negative, you must put it in as a negative and not a subtraction because that will come up with an error if you are trying to take something away from an equal sign there. So um, minus 8x squared uh, plus 18x minus 7. Awesome. All right. So from here, I'm going to uh, just zoom standard that so I can just see my regular negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10 axis um, and have a look at those graphs there. All right. So we can see looks like there might be a little bit of a point of intersection um, at that point there that you can hopefully see on the screen. But it could also they, they, those graphs might not necessarily be touching. So we can't be 100 percent sure. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trace to get a better idea of what's happening at that point. Um, and it looks to me, it looks like it's around about 1, 3 there. All right, so if I press the trace button, this lets me kind of cruise around my graph um, and see what's happening with those points. So if I kind of find around about my point of intersection there, um, I can see that I've got an x value of 1 and a y value of 3 around by that first point. That's for my first equation. Uh, to get to my second equation, if I also want to trace that one, if I just use the up and down button on my navigation keys, so if I tab down, that changes the function to then highlighting y2 instead of y1. Um, so again, I can kind of go back to around about that point where I think the point of intersection might be. And now I've got pretty much the same x and y value there. So I'm looking like at x equals 1 and y equals 3, um, there could be a, uh, a, a point of intersection at that point there. All right, now I could just solve this using uh, using that calc menu that we've talked about in one of the previous videos. So going second, trace to get the calculation menu, and then using that number five function, which is the intersect. Um, but I want to have a go at doing it a little bit differently, and I want to use my table function to get a really a good idea of what's happening at that point. Um, and table's great for when you want to see a list of all the values in that particular function. So if I go second graph, that's going to bring up my table um, and I can see here my x values are going up in two and then I can see exactly what's happening with y1 and y2. Uh, from there though, I would I would like to see, I thought my point of intersection was probably around about the value of x equals one. So instead of my tables going up in twos, so I want it to go up in one. And the quickest way to change that is to press the plus button. Um, you can see there on the screen it says plus plus press plus for uh, the change in the table. So I'm going to press plus, and this lets me change what I want my table to go up in. So at the moment, it's going up in twos. So I'm going to change that to a one, and then I can see a little bit better what's happening there. So I can see at x equals one, 
my y1 is equal to 3 and my y2 is also equal to 3 so I definitely have a point of intersection at that point there. And from that, now I've kind of found that really nice and quickly, that might cause me to deduce as well that because I've got this nice kind of whole number point of intersection, maybe the algebraic solution wouldn't be too bad and I could go through and have a go at collecting those like terms and then uh, solving that quadratic equation. My second example is to find the point where the equation y equals x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 3 does not exist. Now this might not be something that you've actually looked at before, um, but it will definitely come up uh, later on in uh, senior school and it is kind of a really nice like, kind of interesting problem to look at. Okay, so back into my function editor, editor I'm again going to put in that equation. So in this case we've got a fraction to deal with, so I'm going to use my alpha x to get my fraction template up um, and then I can input that quadratic so x squared plus 5x plus 6 all divided by x plus 3 so x plus 3 there okay I'm going to sketch the graph just by hitting that graph button and there I can see well actually even though I had a quadratic divided by a linear quite interesting that my uh, final graph looks exactly like a linear equation and so far I can't actually see any point where it might not exist which is really confusing because that's what my question asked me to find. But what I can do is if I want to have a look at the table instead that might give me a better idea what's happening. So I'm going to go second and then graph button again to bring up my table um, and I can see here so far it looks like you know I've got a, for every x value I have a y value so, so far that exists for all of the x values that I've got so far. Um, but I'm just going to head back a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go, I'm moving back into my negative x territory. Um, and I can see there that when x is equal to negative 3, I have this error for y. Um, so what is happening there? So that could be my point where maybe it doesn't exist. Um, if I go back into my graph... Uh, I'm going to adjust my window so I can have a little bit of a better look at that negative 3, what's happening there. So I'm now going to change my window. So instead of going from negative 10 to 10, I'm going to go from negative 4 to negative 2 and really zoom in on that area. Um, and there we go. I can see what happens here. There's actually a break in my graph just there. Um, the other really nice thing that you can do with the table, and this is really underutilized, is to go to the mode button. Um, and there, if I go down until where I can see, see this bit that says full horizontal and graph table, the graph table actually shows the graph and the table on the screen at the same time. So I'm going to select that and then go back to my graph button. And here I can see those values again. So again, we've got that negative 3, the error, and I can see that really clearly there's that break in the, my graph from there, from that point. All right, so the last thing I wanted to mention was just how you could use that table to help you practice a little bit of substitution and a bit of algebra. So I've plugged an equation into y1, x squared minus 25. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to head to my table setup. So that's just above the window. So if we go second and then window, we get into that table setup. Now table start, that tells us the value the table is starting on. And the change in the table is how much you're going up or down by um, when you're scrolling through the table. Next thing, you can see here we've got independent and dependent, so that's your variables. And you can set them to either auto or ask. So I'm going to set my dependent variable, so that's my y variable in this case, to ask. Um, and then if I go into my table, you'll see that for x, we have a whole lot of values, um, but there's nothing in there for y1. So what we can do here is we could say, okay, well, um, my equation was x squared minus 25. Um, so if I square my 5, um, and then minus 25 from it, I'm going to have a y value of 0. And we could press enter on that, and then it will come up and tell us what the correct answer is. Um, same with the next one for negative 4. We could have negative 4 squared, well that gives me 16. Uh, 16 minus 25 uh, is negative 9. Uh, so again, if I press enter, I can see there I get an answer of negative 9. Um, so that's just a little thing that you could do to help you out when you're preparing for a test or maybe an exam. Um, alrighty, well that's it for me for today and it was great having you so I'll see you next time.